it's not only about knowing the software, it's about knowing the people, knowing the culture, knowing the community, how things work. So yeah, being in the community for so long, it's definitely made it easier to see how things work and go with the flow. And basically I changed from spare time contributor and like on my weekends to it like full time. So it made the transition much, much easier. I think it's important that you get involved with many of the teams, not just one and just focus on one thing because nothing that we do within WordPress, within Woo, is just focus on one thing. If you want to change the design, you need to talk to the developers, you need to talk to core. And if you change something, you need to document it. Hey, Bob WP here and welcome to the WordPress way, a do the woo podcast show. This episode is brought to you by A2 e-commerce hosting, your partner to help you keep your client stores running 24 seven smoothly with their enhanced security. And if you are discovering the WordPress way show is resonating with the audience you'd want to reach, we are currently looking for sponsors. I'll tell you more about A2 hosting and our sponsorship opportunity later in the show. But let's cut to the chase as we dive into a fantastic episode with Abba chatting with Estella and Pascal about all things translation, internalization and documentation. Hello, and we're here for another WordPress way on Do The Woo. I'm Abba Takor, and we're continuing our journey around the world, finding fascinating people who are doing the WordPress way, but also can tell us a little bit about the Woo too. So stick with us and um, stay on our journey. So today we have Estela Rueda with us and Pascal Birchler. And we're going to have a very interesting conversation about translation, internationalization, documentation. In fact, we might find a few other things that are ending in Asian and talk about those too. So, so stay with us and let's see where we go. So welcome, both of you. It's so nice to have you here. Now, Estella, I never know where you are currently in which country. So tell us today. Which country are you coming live from? Hi, Ava. How are you? Um, thanks for the invite, first of all. Um, where am I located now today? I am in Italy. I recently moved last two, two months ago. I moved to Italy in Trieste. That's where I am living. But that's not where you, you're from, is it, before? Where, where did you grow up? Now, that's a different that's a different answer from where I am from. <laughs> you cannot I, I really don't like it when people ask me where I am from because as, as, it depends on what you want to know. It's always a different it's always a different answer. I, I tell you what, tell us some other countries that you've you've hopped over to so that we can get a flavor of the international Estella. <laughs> well, let's see. Mexico, that's where I was born. I grew up in the U.S., um, in Mexico, somewhere, you know, up and down. I went to college in Costa Rica. Um, I got married and moved uh, and lived in the Netherlands for a long time. <laughs> then I went back to the U.S. <laughs> um, then after that, I moved back to the Netherlands and then Slovakia. And now I'm here in Italy. See, I love that. This is why you are the, one of the perfect people to be on here talking about internationalization. And I know that international background of yours also means that inclusion is a really important part of your work in the WordPress and the Do The Woo community too. So, so thank, thanks for telling us all that. Pascal, where are you coming in from today? Hey, everyone. Um, thanks for having me as well. Uh, it's a bit more boring here. Uh, born and raised in Switzerland, and I'm still in Switzerland today. There is nothing boring about Switzerland. It's one of my favorite favorite places in the world. So where, whereabouts in Switzerland are you coming from? Uh, in Zurich. That has got to be one of my favorite cities. So um, I think it was last there for, for WordCamp Zurich. Seems a, seems a lifetime ago, but it was only just before COVID. So um, I had the pleasure of coming to speak at, at that. So it's an amazing place to be. Right. Now, we all know it's a, a really busy time because when we're recording this at the moment, we've just had beta one 
for the WordPress 6.5 release. And all three of us, in fact, have been quite busy with this release. So I wondered if we could just give people a little bit of an insight into why is it that both of you do give time to the release and you do give it in such an amazing number of teams from design to Amarcoms, documentation, polyglots, um, performance and core. So why, why do you do that? And why should people think about that? I think it's important that you get involved with many of the teams, not just one and just focus on one thing because nothing that we do within WordPress, within Woo is just focus on one thing. If you want to change the design, you need to talk to the developers. You need to talk to core. And if you change something, you need to document it. You need to let people know what you did, whether it's documentation for developers, what is documentation on the features, right? That is just for uh, for end users. So always, always have to talk among teams. So belonging just to one team sometimes makes, most of the time, I'm going to have to say that, makes no sense. I love that answer. And in fact, I can, I, I, the blog I'm writing in my head now is just, it's just, that's going to start with that answer. So, so, it, and it is true. You know, I, I work, um, and volunteer in probably about seven different teams, um, actively. Um, but they all have touch points and my work tends to focus on actually where they touch. And it really does make a difference. I don't think I would have been a good docs co-lead if I hadn't understood core. And I certainly wouldn't have been as good if I hadn't understood training. And this time I was doing a lot of work in, 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 in training too. But performance is the one that really I've learned more, most about being docs um, co-lead for the last release because it affects everything. I thought it just affected uh, this little bit over here and this is like an add-on thing that you know we we look at before or maybe we look at after but I did not realize until I worked with Pascal and Joe and all the wonderful people in performance that actually it affects every single thing that we do and probably should be more in our focus as we as people learn to to use WordPress and it be something that when you start as a developer or you start making sites as a site builder, performance is right up there in the first things that you learn. And of course, who better to ask that question to than Pascal? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, performance uh, affects everyone. And it's not just you as a user of WordPress when you're like uh, writing new content in WordPress or you use your site, but it also affects your visitors. And that's why it's so important to... Uh, improve performance across the board both on the back end and front end and uh yeah i think in the recent years we've done a pretty good job already but there's of course always lots more to do pascal do you remember offhand how many performance improvements there were in 6.4 i should know because i did the field guide but i can't remember at this very moment i know i was absolutely stunned by how many oh i don't have a, a number in my head because like there's so many like sometimes there's like bigger changes, but there's like so many smaller improvements as well. If it's like, you know, some caching or like some some code optimization. Um, so yeah, I don't have a number, but it, it's definitely a lot of improvements. I tell you what, we'll put it in the link in the show notes just so that people can read how many there were. Um, I was looking at the the piece right now, and you know, it was it was quite phenomenal. And I think if you are thinking of that performance is an issue for your WordPress site, or even that you're debating working with Woo and Woo and WordPress because of performance. You need to check out this post on WordPress 6.4 performance improvements and look at the work that's happening now because it really shows you that performance does not have to be a problem. In fact, the ability you have with speed with WordPress and Woo is phenomenal. So, Pascal, if you were suggesting WordPress and Woo to to other people, would you what would you say to them if they were hesitant about performance with the software? Uh, don't be, because WordPress is known for powering like some of the biggest uh, WordPress, uh, some of the biggest websites in the world, uh, and 
also WooCommerce, like it can scale to like, you know, super large sites and definitely proven to be a robust and performant choice. Um, and there's like performance plugins that you can use. There's always something that you can do on your hosting side of things as well. Um, so yeah, it's definitely like performance is definitely like you shouldn't, you don't have to worry about performance when you're going with WordPress and Vue. And I think sometimes it's a misnomer and people have this idea of what it is and the limits. And actually it's it's not. But that also brings me back to the value of documentation. Because um especially in you know in in the work for the last few releases and um in our in our shows here, we've been explaining how important documentation is because if you understand what you need to do on your WordPress site um, to make it perform better, then you've got more chance of it actually doing that because it's not often the software that's limiting. It's how much you can read in, in terms of documentation, how much you can learn about, how much you can learn from your peers. And, and, and to that, I have to go to Estella who's nodding at me going, yes, 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 this is exactly what we've been telling people. So Estella, you tell them. Well. Yes, documentation is very important, but documentation in all levels. Right now, WordPress.org, we have many levels of documentation. We have the support forums, which will give you, you know, the one-off questions, very specific. They also have articles and stuff that they've been recollecting from answering many things. Then we have documentation for end users, which are people that are non developers that they want to know, know how to do the basic stuff on their side, make it, you know, look nice, look pretty, is working. That's all they need to do. We have documentation for developers and they go all on the deep stuff, you know, all the code, <laughs> everything in the back end that not everybody understands, but that's good for them. And then we have learn, right? Which are long, longer tutorials video or just you know reading that people can can learn at their own pace and when they and these are good when they want to learn about one specific feature or how to create a yeah a specific feature how to create a theme for instance or how to create a plugin or how to run performance you know it's like very specific topics that's what it is so yeah and it's all available for free. Yes, it's all available for free. And many of these things, for the longest time, um, you had to go and look around the web, you know, Google as much as you can to find it. And what we are trying to do nowadays is to have them inside WordPress.org so that people know that this is... We are the ones that build it and we are telling you how to do it, you know, how to fix it, how to work in it, how to learn about it. So, yeah. And the beauty, of course, is, is that um, right now we're in, a, a, there, we're going to be working on documentation for end users. That starts pretty much in the field guide as well as beta one comes in. And if you are passionate about these things and you want to help other people or you wish something was documented, but you can't find it. This is the time to come and volunteer. The same for performance, because the core performance team have regular meetings. They're a fairly new team and they are pretty awesome. And I am um, in, and I've had, um, Nalini, who's been helping research for this show. And she's just sent me a message to say that there were 64 tickets with a focus on performance in 6.4, which is pretty good. And that's just, main tickets there was lots of other things as well in addition to that so you, this is a happening team as of course is documentation and uh and you get virtual cookies too now, these are important things to get they make mm. you smile and being able to smile in a day is quite important yeah but if you attend work camps and you go to contributor days you get real cookies <laughs> For the documentation. <laughs> now I've missed out on these. I've been at word camps and I haven't had the but I haven't had the cookie. So I'll need to have a word with them, um, with the development people, and um, and see if I can get some some wonderful ones sent across. So it's 
Yeah, six point five obviously has a lot of things in the in the release, and for our regular followers, we have got a show that's coming to you in mid March with a six point five, and we'll be looking at all the wonderful things in that as well. So if you've got questions that you'd like to be included um, in that, or that we can research for you, do send them in, and um, we'll try and make sure we can follow those up too. So for 6.5 and beyond, what would both of you like to see as different in a release in terms of how can we get more of the translation understood, more of the need for internationalization understood, and also just a bit more, I don't know if understanding is a quite word, uh, as, as, as the, but there is a lot of work that our polyglots do. Our polyglots are our volunteer translators for anyone who's not heard that term before, because they have a quite a short time to translate the release into their local language so that WordPress can be used in that latest software more easily in that locale. So Pascal, I'm going to go to you first of all, because I know this is something that you feel very passionate about. What would you like to see if you had a wish list of that that would make translations and their importance and all the perfunctant translations and all the internationalization work that you are involved with, what would make it easier and what would you, what would be your dream? So one dream that actually already came true, which is that uh, on translate.wordpress.org, you can now translate plugins or, or uh, core itself directly inside WordPress. Uh, that is very important because sometimes you have a text that you need to translate, but you don't know where it's used. But so you can just basically open WordPress and then you see the string in the necessary context and you can, can translate it right uh, in there and then, you know, upload those translations. Um, I think that's an amazing change that happened. Um, and the other thing, I think it's just in general, maybe for developers to, uh, translate there or like use WordPress in another language during development because like just so often uh, strings are not actually translatable and we have to fix that. Um, that's always a bit annoying. Um, yeah, it would help to, you know, use some plugins or just change uh, the language to just use WordPress in, a, in another language to get that experience. So where, where do you think that would be the most effective during the beta testing, the RC? time or do you think that would be when we've got a live release even before beta i think when especially when like developing like a big new feature um it can happen that things get forgotten uh, but beta is of course the ideal time because that's where we start focusing on bug fixing um, so especially during the beta period it's it's a good time to fix those translation issues I'm just thinking about how we could make that workflow easier. Do you think something on Learn possibly might might help with that if we showed people how to do that? Uh, possibly, yeah. Um, I think the WordPress Playground is already very helpful because it makes it easier for you to test like WordPress with a different setup. You don't have to change your main website um, to do that. Um, so maybe making it easier to do this via playground would be helpful, but uh, I don't have like concrete ideas right now. But the beauty of this show is that we we have a lot of people who come back after listening and go, actually, we could do it this way. And it also people are, we've had guests before who've gone away to their teams and go, could we do this? And it's great because we we like that do the woo. We like not only being about empowering and sharing the community, but also coming up with good ways of people working together. So I think we'll take that definitely to the next Learn meeting as well. So it, it is really important. Just so we, we're aware that when we've got new things like WordPress Playground, we will put that it's in the show notes. We, if you listen to our show from last month, we had a whole section on WordPress Playground as well. But if you're not sure what it is, there are tutorials, there is help documentation on how to use it. And as Pascal said, it doesn't have to change your current setup to be able to use it and you can test WordPress too and be part of the releases in the making. We'll share some of those in the cross link in the show notes too. 
Every site you build has the potential to be fast and secure. With A2 e-commerce hosting, it's understood that your client's stores are running 24-7 and that speed is critical to keep both of you happy. As you have heard a number of times from guests, performance is key. A2 hosting VPS and dedicated turbo plans will make you a shining star when it comes to your clients. They even have a one-click deployment for Woo sites when easy is an alternative. Their enhanced security won't keep yourself or your clients awake at night, and they have promised a no-hassle money-back guarantee. So consider A2 Hosting for your next client project at a2hosting.com. Hey, it's me again, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we're getting ready to launch Do The Woo 4.0 and currently looking for sponsors for this particular show, The WordPress Way. Not only will you be elevating the voices of so many people in the WordPress space and so many pieces of WordPress, but also support our hosts, Baba, Birgit, and Courtney as they dive into conversations about core DEIB, contributing, and a lot more. So if you're interested in learning more about it, go to this site, fill out the form, do the woo.io forward slash sponsor. Estella, okay, I need to know your dream now. What would be your dream to make it better for polyglots internationalization and translation? My dream is almost coming true. <laughs> almost coming true. Hey, I love this. So the Glot Press team has been working on improving the plugin to be able to take long tasks, long text, right? And it may be they are planning on launching this new plugin in WordCamp Asia, which unfortunately I'm not going to be able to be there, but the people that are going to be there, they're going to see it. And I am really, really looking forward to it. Um, that is one. The other one is one that I'm still working on is improving the style guides for every language. Um, These this style guides have been written up a while, long time ago. I don't know. Some of them have never, have, haven't been updated in forever. And in, the, in recent years, we have had many issues and changes in the language, you know, in all, all languages. And how do we address, right? Like we had the problem of gender, we have problems of um, how to address people. Yeah, sometimes it's formal, to inform or informal, or you know, gender, the, the feminine and masculine. Like English is easy because it's a neutral language, but <laughs> Spanish, no. Everything is feminine or masculine, and there is nothing in between. So we need to learn how to address these things, not only in the cha- in, in the in the way we. We name objects because that grammar, grammar we're not going to change it, right? We cannot change the grammar, but we can change. We can learn and give tips on how to address things like you know the users. We always call them masculine, so maybe we need to find a different way of naming them. You know this kind of thing. And Spanish is not the only the only issue with this, right? A lot of other uh, languages have these problems. Uh, also, the integration of English terms that are non-translatable, right? A lot of a lot of languages just decided to keep the English term and and not translate it. So, I think that improving the style guides that we have that would make it easier. And then using AI to translate with always always finishing with a human review doesn't go from chat GPT is straight into globe press ever. <laughs> you need to check it. You need to read it. And you t- need to make sure it doesn't read like a robot. It needs to read like a human is telling you what to do and how to do things, right? Absolutely. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's almost coming true. I love it. So of course, that means that next time I, you know, we'll have to find you a new dream so that we can work towards that as well. So for anyone who doesn't know, can you just share what Glot press is? Glotpress is the tool that is used by the Polyglots team to review the uh, strings, 
make sure that is they are the same that is the you know the same terms the 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 functions i don't know if probably pascal knows more about this because it is used more in development or core than it is in in, in documentation so i don't know if pascal knows more about how how it is or what it is how to use it uh sure uh i mean godpress is basically a wordpress plugin and it it's what powers translate.wordpress.org. Uh, it's used to translate not only WordPress itself, but also all the plugins and themes in the directory. And I think even the mobile apps um, and some other parts. Um, and we'll find a way of linking that in the trans- in transcription as well. So for anyone who's not come across it before. But those are really cool. Those are really good things that are coming up. And Pascal, you are also um, got a hit GitHub work that you're doing. On, on various things relating to translation, but particularly performant translations. Do you want to share a bit about how that makes a difference to to WordPress and and therefore also to what people want to do with Woo? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, so uh, it has always been known that the translation system in WordPress, like how WordPress loads translations, etc., is a bit slow, uh, but it never got like. The attention it deserved so last year we did like a very thorough analysis on the performance of the translation system and as a result we built like a completely new translation system um that is more performant uses less memory uh but you know it's like backward compatible so everything still works the same uh and we put that into a plugin called performant translations so everyone could just install this plugin and if you're using WordPress in another language, your site should be instantly faster. And the good news is we're now uh, merging this plugin into WordPress 6.5. So technically, you don't need the plugin anymore. So just update WordPress and it gets faster. And the main thing that the, this new system does, it uses a new uh, file format for translations. So if you have ever translated WordPress or you know dealt with translations in a way, you might be familiar with those .po and .mo files um, that are used by WordPress. And we are replacing that with uh, PHP files. So PHP files that hold all the translations. And uh, because like loading a PHP file in PHP, which is the language that WordPress is written in, is much faster than having to load those uh, binary .mo files. And that, of course, not only improves performance, especially once it's in core, but also makes that more available to more people who don't have to do plugins because not everyone has that ability. If they are having a site that's been built for them, they can't always add plugins. But having that feature facility within WordPress core means that more people can use it. And of course, that has a direct benefit for if you're adding WooCommerce on top because you know you can already have something where you can translate it much more easily with WordPress Playground as we've talked about you can test how your um your service that you're having may appear in different translations as well and I I don't know about you two but I definitely think that the understanding of why translation is important really has taken much firmer hold globally um, in the last two or three years compared to what it was like a, a decade ago. And and I'm going to go to you first, Estella, on that. I think even five years ago. I think five years ago, we were not still so sure about translating. Um, it was one part, you know, the core was trans- being translated. That's the, what polyglots were doing mostly. Um, and people locally were were writing their own content, but nowadays we are translating even more, you know. And I have insisted a lot on this, and whenever I can, I talk. And like part of inclusion is giving WordPress to people in their own language, in their own culture, you know, within their own culture. Why? Because you know there is this saying. There is this saying that says, you know, give a man a fish, feed him for one night. Give him, teach him how to fish and you'll feed him forever is the same thing. If we teach somebody how to use WordPress, that somebody may have a work 
for a lifetime. You know, they have a job, they can, they have skills that they can move on, and there you go. So I think that that's what we need to be doing. Now, and we need to take away that part that says, if you want to learn WordPress, you must learn English or speak English. I don't think that that is true, and that should never be true. We need to stop that, we need to avoid that, and we need to go around that and say, okay, we want to include as many people as possible, and we are going to teach as many people as possible how to use WordPress, how to work with WordPress, how to create a life with WordPress, you know, a business, anything that you want to do. And that's why I insist on translating documentation, you know, from developers for end users. Because also is that thing, you do not need to be a developer to create a blog, which in, and with a simple blog, you can create a business, right? Definitely. And, and that is, it is about empowering and it is about having that empowering globally. Um, and I know, you know, one of the questions that we did as part of the research for this podcast today was about, well, but Woo is different. But actually there is for everybody out there who thinks that there isn't a localization aspect of WooCommerce. I can tell you there is, and there's lots of people actually involved with it. And you can contribute to your localization to core. And they maintain translations of the WooCommerce project on Glotpress. So, you know, you can translate it. You can, you can take part in the teams who are working at WordPress.org. The whole thing works together. And that's the beauty of it. It isn't that, Oh, I have to start again. The more we can translate to WordPress, the better that is for people using it for WordPress and all its different ways it can be used, but also for those using it for WooCommerce products. It really is about the future. And there is, there's, we're not going to go back to a place where everything just has to be in English. The, the world has moved on considerably from that. And, and that is a good thing. So if you haven't thought of these things before, or you thought a plugin was, was what was standing in your way, have a look at 6.5 and we'll, we will include in the, the show notes after it becomes into core. We'll get Pascal to write his little paragraph to go in it as well and a link so that people who, who think, okay, what do I do now? Where do I go? We can, we can direct you because a lot of it is about education and education in a positive way because as we share we learn and that's why we have you know so many hundreds of locales we have so many people and in in the shows on do the we we do try and get across different countries as well and to see what people are doing so if you're listening to this from a country we haven't featured yet please let me know on nonstop news uk um or on our do the we on twitter or actually, you'll find us. Look us up, and we're there. And better still, subscribe to our Do the Woo feed, and you'll have lots of ways to be in touch. I'm going to move us slightly sideways. And Estella, apart from living in lots of different countries and having just a huge amount of international experience, and um, and also probably a lot of dishes and foods that you've tried, which we'll come back to. Um. How did you first start using WordPress and feeling that actually it was the software that you wanted to invest your time, not only as a professional, but also your, vo your volunteering time? Because that's quite a commitment. When did you, did you have that moment where you felt this is what I want to do? Yes. <laughs> Let's see. I started long, long, long time ago. I think it was with one point four, 1.7, something around there. Um, I started building my, my websites, my first site, uh, just with HTML, CSS, because that was, we, that's what we had back in the days. Because, uh, and I have my first business as a virtual assistant. I needed to find something that would allow me to make money while staying home because I had a little child, I had a little boy, and I wanted to make sure I was there for him. Um, Somebody recommended WordPress. I went to WordPress and then I, I, I made my enemy number one, the codex. Okay. I hate the codex with, all, with everything that I can. I don't think I hate anything else more. 
I just couldn't understand that. I'm not, I'm not technical. I'm not a developer. So the codecs always, always stop me. Uh, so I went back to CSS and HTML. Uh, I, I took a class on WordPress and I learned how to use it. And that was like three point something when I learned how to use WordPress. And I loved it. And I'm like, oh my God, you can do so many things with this. And I started going here, going there and, you know, learning how to do things. And then, you know, move, move, move fast to nowadays. Um, I went to WordCamp Europe in Berlin, which was 2019. And at, at a contributor, contributor day, I was sitting at the design table and I'm just going like, we were we were beginning with Gutenberg, right? With like it was the beginning of the development of Gutenberg, and everything was magical, and nobody knew what we were doing, but everybody was there. And and I and I told someone like I don't like this, just you know reviewing tickets, making giving comments, you know making comments on tickets and stuff. I think I need something more, like I need a project because I don't feel like I'm giving much. And they said, okay, that's easy. And they sat me at the, at the documentation table. And then these people started talking about things I had no clue that existed. <laughs> it took me probably about three or four months to understand that they were talking about moving the codex into documentation, separating from um, the end user documentation and the development documentation. And I'm like, oh my God, I love that. I'm all for it. <laughs> Get rid of the codex. I don't like the codex. <laughs> now, I know that the codex has been useful. It had a lifetime, it, but I think that we have surpassed it, right? And yes, there are a lot of documents in there that are not being updated and we are little by little retiring it until it will go away eventually. Uh, I think the documentation that we have nowadays has been it's different, um, and I, I, I work in a special project with the documentation team for the end user documentation to recategorize everything, the articles, give them an order, giving them a reason to be somewhere, and they have a lifespan uh, or a, more a path, right? It's like, what is WordPress? Is this my? Is this uh, something you know? The CMS good for my project, and then it teaches you, uh, you know, requirements, maintenance, all the stuff that you will need before. That teaches you what is WordPress, you know, the the uh, the parts of WordPress, the features, and then you have all the information you need, all the tutorials you need to make it look great in a way that a non-developer can understand it. And yeah, that's it. And that's where I'm stuck. I'm, 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 I just love it. And I've learned how to write technical documentation. And I've learned a lot. And that's why you see me sitting at meetings, at different meetings, where sometimes I just say hello. And I'm just sitting, you know, looking at Slack, just going like this, reading, 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 <laughs> every line, just so that I learn what other, other teams are doing. Sometimes I understand the conversation. Sometimes I don't, but it's okay. Because I have the, I have things in my head that tells me, oh, okay, so somebody was talking about this. So the topic is this, um, or they are working on this feature. They're working on that feature and I can talk about it, or at least I know about it. And that's what I do. <laughs> Well, if that's not a reason to be inspired to join in and learn not only more about the projects and how to do the different things, but also improve your own abilities and knowledge so that you can use it in your own workspaces too. You know, it, it really is. Thanks, Estella. And it's been an absolute pleasure to, to work with you now over, oh, I've lost count how many years it's, but it's been wonderful. We've, we've, we've worked at WordCamp Europe's and, uh, um, documentation, polyglots, I think core releases, it, it goes on. But it is, as Estella said, even if you don't understand something straight away, observing is a great way to actually learn. And there isn't really a stupid question. So, you know, it is about working together because at the end of the day, we also want to encourage the next generation of people contributing to the project. And that doesn't have to mean 
a younger generation. It can be just people who, at whatever time of their life, may now want to contribute and not know how to start or need to see someone that they can relate to and who has skills that are similar to them or an area that they've always wanted to work in. So come along, get involved. And Pascal, I know you are just amazing. I'm going to ask you to tell a little bit about what your day job is as well. And just to show that, you know, that you can, you can mix the two. Uh, yeah, sure. So my day job uh, right now is actually contributing or like for the most part is contributing to WordPress and especially WordPress performance. Uh, it wasn't always that way. Like I used to work for a WordPress agency building websites for clients. Uh, but now I'm part of a team that is focusing on improving uh, performance in CMSs like WordPress. So not just WordPress, but mostly because WordPress is, you know, uh, like powering like, I don't know, 40% of the web or something. So it's pretty big. Um, it, so yeah, the main focus is performance, uh, the performance team that you uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, right now I'm a co-tech lead uh, co-core tech lead for WordPress 6.5. So I also have to make sure like all the, the tickets are, um, done and closed and fixed, uh, for the release and make sure all the deadlines are, um, you know, kept and things like that. Um, it's so maybe a bit more project management than coding, I would say on that part, but, uh, I also have fun, like, fixing bugs, uh, you know, the performance translation thing is, was very dear to my heart because, you know, I started using WordPress uh, also uh, not in English. Uh, it wasn't German, so performance uh, translations has always been very important for me. And um, to, we have so many contributors to, to performance team, but also 6.5 in general. Um, so it, I try to make sure like people feel welcome, uh, guide them wherever possible, point them into the right directions. Um, yeah. And Pascal, you're, you're a developer relations engineer in your, in your day job working with, with Google. And do, do you feel that your, your work there is enhanced by the fact that you have been a contributor for so long and you have worked with people across the globe? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think we're like ha having contributed to WordPress before is why uh, I was able to join Google to work on WordPress. Um, it's not about only about knowing the software. It's about knowing the people, uh, knowing the culture, uh, knowing the community, how things work. Uh, it's when I've seen people, you know, just arrive at WordPress and like, I don't know, proposing some change. Uh, without knowing how things work, they usually get upset or frustrated and um, leave again um, because it doesn't match their expectations. So, yeah, being in the community for so long, uh, it's definitely definitely made it easier to you know how to see how things work and and you know go with the flow and basically. I change from like a you know spare time contributor and like on my weekends to it like full time, so it made the transition much much easier. Thanks, Pascal. I know um, both of you are very valued in the in the team, and by you know many contributors valued as dear friends too, because that is one of the things about the community is that you get to know people really well, and you may not get you may not get along with everybody, but that's okay. There, it is such a big community that you can find people that you can work with and learn from and also learn different ways of thinking. And I think anybody who, who does join, I think particularly because we're focusing on translation today, if, if you get a reply and you think, oh, I don't quite understand that or they, it seems like maybe they don't want me there, it's probably not the case. It's probably just remembering that the person you're writing to or write or is writing to you English may not be their first language, and sometimes it can it can come across differently than it's intended. And I think that's one of the big learning things. And I think the more you get involved in translation, the more you actually understand that that is super important to know. And when we're writing and talking, 
to re- to think about will somebody else who is not used to doing this day in day out or has to translate everything in their head as they're speaking or reading is it easy for them to follow that and if not how can i make that a little bit easier because that that all comes down to us as well and of course more things join us together than they do that separate us so as people know who know me from um for a while now know that i have a thing about wordpress and food and recipes and as we're particularly after covid and during covid getting people to think about eating healthily for their well-being but also as a cultural way of coming together keeping in touch and for sharing cultures it's a great leveler and a way of people to discover other people that they may not have contact with so I was really surprised when interviewing people from one from Italy and one from Germany, and they came up with the same food that they love to cook when they're working. So I am intrigued. Did you two speak to each other before this broadcast? Because you both came up independently with the fact that you liked one particular food. And I did a quick look in the a trusted um, researcher in the background here has had a look at how popular this food was. Now, I've got a slight pause before I tell you what this food is and see if you can decide yourselves. So, Estella, can you describe it without mentioning its name? Mm, let me think. Is a sauce? Some sort of sauce? Not really a sauce, but some sort of it. <laughs> um, you can eat it with I actually eat it with Italian bread, which is amazingly delicious. Oh, yeah. um, I moved two blocks away from the best bakery that you have in Trieste. So you see me, you find me there every morning at seven o'clock in the morning so I can get good bread recently coming out of the oven. Um, there is also, um, it's a Mediterranean dish, you know, this some sort of sauce that we like. <laughs> um, ingredients. I don't know. You can, you can also add flavors to it. You know, I have, uh, I eat it, I like to eat it sometimes with uh, extra olive oil. Sometimes I put a little bit of chili on it. Um, if I'm feeling um, adventurous, I add extra garlic. <laughs> and yeah, I tried even even one time with avocado. No, it's not good. <laughs> Trust me, no, do not mix it with avocado. <laughs> It turns very weird green color. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to jump quickly to Pascal. Pascal, you have 10 seconds to describe this dish without telling people what it is. Uh, all right. Uh, creamy, great for dipping. Uh, goes well with like pita bread as well, or uh, I don't know, maybe cucumber, for example. Uh, you can do it at home as well, or just buy it in store. Okay. And we've, I think we've given them enough time. And and thank you to Nalini, who's just popped into the chat for me, that the global market for this product is worth $2.62 billion in 2020. And it was projected to grow to $6 billion by 2028. Now, I should tell them really what it is, shouldn't I? Because they're going to want to be able to cook it. So the, the favorite item for these wonderful people, a developer relations engineer and a UK, a UX strategist, um, is hummus. And I am going to want your hummus recipes so that we can pick some of the best ones to make live on our cooking show that we're going to have while we talk about Woo and WordPress. Cause why wouldn't you? And hopefully we'll see two of these people with us as well sharing their recipes. And I told you, we're going to have to cover food at some point. All that leaves for me to say is thank you very much to Estella and to Pascal for joining Do The Woo and talking about WordPress and WooCommerce. We've loved being in Italy and in Switzerland today. If we can come to be your, your country, then let us know. I really want to cover as many continents as I can this year. Thank you for joining us. We'll put everything in the show notes. If you've discovered something that you'd like to know a bit more about, do let us know on our different Do The Woo channels 
and we'll make sure that we come and talk about those too. So thank you to both of you and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Hey, Bob WP here, and I would like to thank Estella and Pascal, not only for their insights that they brought to today's episode, but for their amazing contribution to the WordPress ecosystem. And of course, thanks to A2 Hosting for their support. Please check them out at a2hosting.com. And lastly, if you are interested in sponsoring the WordPress way, simply go to do the woo.io forward slash sponsor and let us know. So until the next time, take care.